William James once said, Begin to be now what you will be hereafter. Welcome to McBain Moments. Alright everyone, if you're new to the channel, welcome to the manor. Please make sure you take a moment and subscribe down below. We are on the road to 13 million subscribers, one subscription at a time, so make sure you subscribe. Most people assume that you need to follow a road to become what it is you want to be. And this is actually true. This is a correct assumption, which is rare for assumptions, but it is a correct assumption. But the, the misunderstanding is that you have to wait to start being what you want to be until you get there. This is actually, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? This is an obstacle you have to overcome. This is a mental blockage that you have to overcome because the only way you become what it is you want to be is by starting to act like who you want to be. You know, if you want to be good at something, you have to act, mentally speaking, as if you're already good at it. Now, that doesn't mean you have to be arrogant and you have to be like, oh, I'm an expert. No, 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 no. That means putting forth the confidence that you're as good as you think you are or you want to be and then knowing what your limitations are and saying, you know what? I haven't gotten that far yet. What can I do to learn about it? What can I do to figure that out? Don't be afraid to say you don't know. Don't be afraid to say you don't know. There is very few people get upset when you say, you know what? I don't know the answer to that, but I will find out. Or let me double check that for you. Because that shows that you have the self-awareness to say, you know what? This is beyond my current scope. I want to learn so I can be a better help to you. I want to solve this problem, but I want to get it right the first time. And anyone who gets upset at you for doing so is a, you know, they're not worth your time. They're assholes. And you know what? In most jobs, you're going to run into people like that. Well, you should know that already. Yeah, well, I've only been doing this job for six months. Sorry. Sometimes that's the way it goes. It's like, yeah, when you're in a job, you're expected to be the expert. But most people of intelligence understand you're not going to be an expert on day one. That doesn't mean you don't act and conduct yourself in a way that shows the confidence that you know what you're doing or that you understand what you're doing to a certain extent or that you're willing to learn. Um, a good example of this, I am currently a small YouTuber. As of yesterday, I have 407 subscribers. I still try to act as if I've already reached 13 million. That's the goal, right? 13 million subscribers. We're on the road to 13 million subscribers. That's the motto. When we hit 13 million, well, I guess we're going to be on the road to 26 million subscribers. It's not that I believe I'm already there when the numbers obviously say I'm not. It's that I have the confidence to know I'm going to get there. And so I'm going to conduct myself today the way I will when I have reached my goal. That's the point. You have to conduct yourself today the way you will when you reach your goal. You know, it's funny. I'm, I'm listening to The 4-Hour Workweek by Tim Ferriss. And it's a very interesting book so far. And he makes a point that kind of blew my mind. And I'm, I'm actually going to look into this because I, I think he might be correct. There's a line in the book where he says, and, I, and this is a paraphrase, it is easier to raise a million dollars than it is a hundred thousand. It's easier to raise a million dollars than it is a hundred thousand. And the reason it's easier to raise a million dollars is because no one's asking for it. It's that simple. No one's gonna no one walks up to a bank and says, Hey, I need a million bucks. No one walks apparently it's it's easier to, to strike up a relationship with someone who is at the top, not because they are easy to reach, because you're always going to have gatekeepers, you know, secretaries and phone answers and getting their, their, their personal emails is damn near impossible, but they're bored. They're lonely. As long as you're genuine, you can actually strike up a conversation. If you ask them an honest question, don't ask them for a favor, a question. You know, things like, when was the last time you were happy? 
or what what was the happiest event in your life or what do you feel gives your life meaning or what what is the most important thing in your opinion and they'll write you back and that that just blew my mind and it's because people who are willing to take that chance and write someone who is like completely off their radar or they assume is off the radar because they're just they're just so far distant from them it, it it's the very definition of the quote begin to be who you will be hereafter that's how you network that's how you build relationships that's how you become what it is you want to be you connect with people in the area you want to work in you foster relationships and so yesterday i had gone through cuz i i I gather all these quotes together. All of these quotes I gather together in my actual 9 to 5 job. It's part of our my social media campaign. It's what I do. I do a lot of social media marketing. It's part of my job. Um, I'm in sales too. I do more sales than marketing, but I prefer marketing because I find it more fun. So I gather these quotes for my company's Facebook page and I write them in a notebook. And my boss has approved this, so it's not like I'm, I'm you know, skimming off company time or anything. And then I choose the best ones I like for these McBain moments. And I, I wrote down this quote and thought, that's a really good quote. And then on my way home, I'm listening to the audiobook and I heard that line. I'm like, boom, that's it. That's what it means. Begin to be today what you will be hereafter. Begin to act in a manner, act in the manner that you wish to be able to act when you've made it. Because what's going to happen is your brain's going to build the confidence to continue to act as you build up. And people are going to see that confidence and you're actually going to be more successful. Not because necessarily you've moved in a different way, but because with that confidence, people are going to work with you. Because you're not afraid. You're not scared. You're not meek. You're like, yes, I can do that. Or let's, let's talk about this. Let's do this. Let's take that risk. And then you win. And it blows you away. But because you won, you're like, I can do this. Let's do it again. Think about what you're most afraid of in life. Like, not don't make it abstract. Make it concrete. Come up with the absolute worst case scenario. And this is an advice out of the four hour work week book by Tim Ferriss. So I'm paraphrasing his methodology. It's something I have not done yet. This is my goal for the weekend. Come up with the worst case scenario in your mind. Make it concrete. Specifics. Write it down. As long as you don't reach that point, you're doing good. Now you know what you fear. You know how to avoid it. Go read the 4-Hour Workweek by Tim Ferriss. I'm working through it, and I've only, I'm only 2 hours into, I think, a 10-hour audio. No, it's a 14-hour audiobook, and I'm already loving it. Give it a shot. This has been a McBain moment.